So I pretty much finished all the components with 10 minutes to spare. I have plenty of time to think of how am I going to make this dish beautiful. The first thing that I'll do is actually take my cake out of the molds and I started cutting my cake in different shapes. And I started laying it down with all the other components. I personally loved it, but I don't know what the choice would say. 30 minutes left. The, the coconut curd, they have in a pot. It needs long cooking as well, because you have to reduce it and then separate the oil from the curd. You really have to keep an eye on that one, because or else, you know, you're going to be serving an ash. While I keep on looking at that one and stirring it, I'm toasting my peanut, and then I have to zest the lime for my uh, sweet corn coolie. Heaps of things going on in there. Leo, I'm intrigued. Corn, dessert. But traditionally, we, we use corn. It's flexible. Well, because there's a natural sweetness in corn, isn't there? Yes. And there's a natural sweetness in a squash, so that does make sense. Yes, yes. Is it going to be good? You'll be the judge. Yeah, <laughs> I will be the judge. The overall taste I'm going for is a sweet duck, with orange being the sweetness, and then the bitterness of the, the kale chips to come through and cut through that sweetness. My quinoa is just not responding how I want it to. It's going nowhere near as creamy as I anticipated. I knew it wouldn't be too creamy, but it's just not quite getting there, and I'm starting to feel the pressure. Murphy's Law, both of my syrups are ready at once. So I've got the caramel that's already caramelised, which needs to be attended to straight away with the cream. And I've also got the sugar syrup, which has hit 118 degrees and needs to be poured into my egg yolks immediately. <laughs> and the parfait tastes great when I put it in the freezer. It all looks to be going so well. I'm just wondering about talking to Josh and Mark about making it a 45 minute challenge. How does oh, that sound? Yeah. <laughs> that was a joke. If we give you that extra 15, you better make it count. So this is like a, a shortbread? Yeah, and then almost a, like then a biscuit a shortbread. Moussey, well, no, it'll be like a dense chocolate tart filling. To get the really good contrast there yeah. would be more of a moussey filling, wouldn't it? I've got some whipped cream going to be on there with some vanilla bing. Now you're talking. OK. <laughs> I am Mr Whipped Cream. OK, cool. Now I need to bring my fish to room temperature before I cook it. On top, I may be quite controlled, but I'm actually really quite competitive. I really want to prove today that I'm quite capable of doing the brief that they ask us with flavours and textures. Well, to make this pancake, I drizzle this red egg mixture on the pan to create a floral pattern. And then I put my liquid batter on top of the egg, and it makes a beautifully vibrant pancake that looks modern. OK, guys, 10 seconds away from 10 minutes to go. Oh, I am going into this tasting with very high expectation, OK? So I pretty much finished all the components with 10 minutes to spare. I have plenty of time to think of how am I going to make this dish beautiful. The first thing that I'll do is actually take my cake out of the moulds and I started cutting my cake in different shapes. I decided to use a black plate and decided to uh, use a rectangle. And I started laying it down with all the other components. I personally loved it, but I don't know what the choice would say. Final step, gonna get that beautiful, beautiful eye fillet, nice and sliced up with thick steaks, seasoned, looking really good. On top of this stove, a relatively simple dish, and getting through the challenge, and my plates are preheated and everything like that. I'm just forming the Cornells with the brand egg to be able to deep fry. Really happy with the flavour. The flavours are there. Salted cod, bit of the gherkin, the fried capers, the mayonnaise. It all is just nice, crunchy fish. Have you got those your plate and everything sorted? Uh, not yet. I just want to take these out, and then that's going to be the next thing. Everything else is ready to go. It's going to be hit or miss here, timing-wise, to be able to plate something really nice. Five minutes, everybody. That's five minutes. I'm loving the smells that are coming out, and I'm loving what I'm seeing on your benches. So I've got five minutes to go, and I'm trying to cut a perfect size circle out of one of these ramekins. I heated up the ramekin just so that it seared through pretty nice and quickly and then it could slip right off as well. And then it just starts to sort of flop over. I'm freaking out. It's a juggling act, but it's always like that in the MasterChef kitchen. There's always lots to do. I'm happy with how it's cooked. I'm just worried about how I'm going to put on the plate now because it's really delicate. I start to plate. I've got a panna cotta that's really perfect around the outside and still not quite set in the middle. I'm really worried about the balsamic vinegar melting my panna cotta because it's still a bit warm. And I make a stupid decision to pour it over the top. It's black, it's sticky, and it's starting to melt the panna cotta. Oh, I've served your pub grub all over again. Sell this dish to me. Uh, salted blue cod brandade with sauce garbage and fries. Come on, Glenda. Oh. Hey? I oh, know. 
I never undersell it. Talk it up. Beautiful um, South Island fresh salt cod. I've salt, salted it for 25 minutes. Gentle wash off, poached potatoes, folded it together, lightly fried. Sauce, capers, acid, cornichons, eggs. And we're talking about something that actually sounds good. Look, the fritters are lovely. A nice amount of salt to it. The sauce is a little, a little bit eggy, probably a little bit too much mayonnaise. Make it elegant. Yeah. You know, I just want to take that off the plate. I want to take that off the plate. A little bit of sauce, something like that. A little wedge of lemon. Suddenly it's... So sauce, different. Petite. It's elegant. what it's about. It's that sort of thing. You can do it. Just got to work on it, and you got to bring it in the yeah. next round. OK. Well done. Thank you. Have a look at that. It's really good. It's pretty, isn't it? What's the name of the dish, Gemma? It's peanut butter parfait with peanut and pancetta praline, salted caramel and chocolate soil with bananas. But the combination of flavours is beautiful, Gemma. Great, thanks. Really good. Cool, good. Most people are always saying speed up. Mm. I want you to slow down, OK? <laughs> I think this is delicious, but technically it's a little bit out of whack, and I think you're trying to do too many things. OK. Crispy skin uh, salmon, eshkabesh vegetables, gazpacho, potato galette. Oh, it looks delicious. It skin's nice and crisp. It's all working really well. You know, you've got your crunch, you've got your acid, you've got, you've got your smooth there with your gazpacho. Big flavours, really big flavours. Thank you. What's well, sort of a really safe dish for you, I think? Um, no, I'm, no. You, well, I'm, I am telling you. Yeah. I think it is. You, you know? think it is? I think your pie and your last challenge was a more unsafe dish. Yeah, yeah. That's a simpler dish. Yeah. You know, this is just really good cookery. Tell me, what have we got in the um, pancake? We have horsing duck with soft pancakes and some fresh herbs and some fried shallots. This would be my type of comfort food. Really tasty. Probably one thing for me, maybe a little bit more sauce in there, just a, just a little fraction dry. Nice technique. I love the fact that I've got a little colour through the pancakes as well. I mean, they're beautifully made. Is that pretty safe for you? I think it is pretty safe for you, isn't it? Um, I think it fits the brief well. We've been through that. It's just about doing something a little bit different with it. And, I, and uh, you know, if you give us a duck pancake, mm -hmm. it wants to be the best duck pancake I've had in a long time. It's a great pancake. It eats really well. Lots of really great things. Take a bit more risk next time. That's it. I love the look of this dish. Uh, Thank the, you. Like, the presentation on it, just the colours, are just classy. Great flavours. Potentially, beef would work a bit better, I think, if it was more thinly sliced rather than sort of steak. Style yep. and bigger pieces. Rice cake is lovely. Mushrooms are really delicious. When you get the wasabi, you could have hammered wasabi in this. A little bit more of that, I think. Love it. Absolutely love it. Is this your best dish, or is it, have you got another one up your sleeve that's better? I was hoping the dessert was going to be better. Wow, you're in good nick then. Yep. Well done, Sarah. That's a great dish. I know that the cake is like a weird looking one, but hey, you can't judge a book by its cover. Leo, I think of all the dishes <laughs> that are out there today, this is the one that's sort of intriguing us the uh, most, would you say, boys? Absolutely. So. Talk us through it. This is a dish that I love eating back home, and it's a dish called Maha Blanca, which is uh, literally translated into white, um, white cake. It's made out of cornstarch, and underneath it is a, a lime and corn compote, or coli, and then I made popcorn to contrast with uh, salted caramel and, of course, peanuts to go with that one. I was watching you cooking this and I was thinking, what is he <laughs> up to? <laughs> Seriously, they're freaking me out. You call it a cake, it's, it's sort yeah, of... Yeah, yeah, that's a... Um... It's interesting, isn't it? it? It sort of doesn't feel like the texture of a cake. It's, it feels like a set mousse to me. When I put that in my mouth and I eat it, it's again, it's another wow moment. It's really, really good, Leo. Well done. <laughs> Mate. 
That is outstanding. You know, it really is.